Hello and welcome to the first in a series of screencasts exploring the Networked Media Open Specifications project from AMWA. I'm Alex Rawcliffe. And I'm Andrew Bonney. And today we're going to be talking through an introduction to what NMOS is all about. NMOS has been developed in line with the Joint Task Force for Network Media from the SMPTE, EBU and VSF reference architecture. And it's been tested by members of the AMWA Networked Media Incubator project as part of their Phase 1 workshop in January. Currently, all of the specifications that we're going to talk about are a work in progress. In this screencast, we're going to provide an introduction to the NMOS family of specifications. We're going to talk you through what documents are available and, at a high level, what they're about. We're going to provide an overview of the concepts that underpin each specification and we're going to introduce our data model, which is all about nodes and grains. In future screencasts, we'll explore individual topics in more detail. That's things like discovery and registration, connection management and in-stream identity and timing. Throughout the development of these specifications, the aims have been to provide open, extensible specifications which fulfil the foundational requirements for professional network media devices. Where possible, existing internet standards have been used, or internet-friendly techniques. These specifications also build upon or coexist with existing industry specifications such as TRO3 and AES67, amongst others. The specifications as they exist today cover three main topics. These are discovery and registration, connection management, and in-stream identity and timing. For discovery and registration, the relevant specifications are the node registration and query API. For connection management, it's the node API. And for the in-stream identity and timing, at present it's the RTP mapping, although other transports may be used in the future. JTNM reference architecture concepts are at the core of everything that we're talking about. And in particular, that means the identity model is used extensively. Topics such as nodes, devices, sources, flows, senders and receivers are things that are directly taken out of the JTNM reference architecture. And also we'll talk about grains, which are the fundamental unit of content. Each of the aspects of the data model are related to each other as shown in this diagram. At the top level is the node. This represents any network connected device, such as a piece of hardware or a virtual machine. Sitting within these nodes are a number of devices, each of which contains a cluster of functionality. Devices may have senders and receivers, which are logical representations of transports onto a network, and each device may expose a number of sources. A source represents the origination point for video, audio or data. Each source may have multiple flows associated with it, so for example for video, there may be a raw video flow or, and multiple coded video flows. Each flow then consists of a number of grains. Each grain contains with it some intimate metadata. This identifies which source it has come from, which flow it is a part of, and a number of timestamps. These timestamps are used to track the origination time for that grain within the flow, and a sync timestamp which is used for synchronization through a number of devices in a networked system. Flows may be made available onto the network via senders. This resource model leads to a number of core concepts. Media networks are made up of nodes, they're the fundamental units that you build your broadcast plant from. And nodes are discoverable, as are the resources that they expose. So you can find flows, sources, senders and receivers. And finally, identity and timing exists end to end. No matter what devices your content passes through, we preserve the identity and the heritage of content. Each node is logically constructed in the following way. Facing the network are a common node HTTP accessible API, access to network transports such as RTP, and the node takes in a synchronization signal, in this case PTP. The node API is made up of a number of resources which expose the aspects of the data model onto the network. The self-resource as part of this API exposes a label for the node, an href to it, a hostname and other node-related metadata. Each of the other resources exposed by the node API exposes similar information 
and for each resource exposed, they are uniquely identified with a UUID. Looking now briefly at the Node API documentation, you can see here how a number of get method based resources are exposed by each node. These surface each of the different resources that are available from it, including self, sources, flows, devices, and so on. If we take an example and look at one of the flows that are exposed by this node, you can see in this response that we include a JSON schema which describes how the flow is put together and the different keys and values that are valid. And then at the bottom is an example of the data held within a flow. At the moment, the definition of a flow is kept relatively minimal. For example, there is a format, which in this case is video. There is a label which identifies what the flow represents. And there are IDs, which represent the ID of the flow and the ID of the source which it came from. As with flows, each sender exposes a schema, which defines how the sender can be put together. At the bottom of this page is an example of a sender. As with all other resources, the sender has a unique ID. In this case, it has a flow ID associated with it, which identifies which flow it is sending. And it exposes a manifest href, which is a link to a file which can identify how a receiver should connect to that flow. In this case, as it's an RTP flow, this is an SDP file. Finally, for the Node API, this is an example receiver. Again, the representation of this looks rather familiar. The addition here is the subscription, which identifies the current sender which the receiver is receiving from. By building up these relationships, we can maintain a live view of exactly what is connected to what within the system. Grains encapsulate video, audio, or other data, providing a wrapper that adds identity and timing information. Importantly, grains don't prescribe a particular type of payload, but they enable us to trace a part of payload, a piece of payload, uniquely through the NMOS system, referencing where, when, and what it came from. This data model-based approach presents a number of benefits. Identity is baked in at the core and can be referenced at higher levels. So, for example, in future use cases, such as a management system, it can reference individual sources, flows, nodes and devices, and create groups of them or create rules associated with them. The approach is agnostic to content formats and coding, to transport types, and to the overall architecture of your system. And all entities in the system share a basic common interface for debugging through the Node API. That's nearly it for this screencast. In our next screencast, we'll talk about discovery and registration, understanding how we can operate small peer-to-peer -peer NMOS systems all the way up to large enterprise scale infrastructures. And we'll look at the API interactions between the Node API and others that enable discovery and registration. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out more about the specifications that we've talked about in this screencast, you can go to the Amwork TV GitHub. Alternatively, members of the Amwork Network Media Incubator project can find more detail on the Amwork.tv project page and also on resources held by the project. Finally, for information on the JTNM reference architecture, go to jt-nm.org. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out more about the specifications that we've talked about in this screencast, you can go to the Amwork TV GitHub. Alternatively, members of the Amwork Networked Media Incubator project can find more detail on the Amwork.tv project page and also on resources held by the project. Finally, for information on the JTNM reference architecture, go to jt-nm.org.